Now, in order to quantitate matter, we need to take measurements. So let's talk about the measurements of matter. And, you know, we really have two different styles of units, I suppose, if you will. Um, we're really interested in, you know, SI units. And SI really has to deal with this international system of units, or um, it's really this French aspect of the system international now. of units. So we tend we tend to look at these SI units. That's what we're really interested in as as scientists. Um, you know, however, there are um, or there is a different version Which, you know, I, I would call more, you know, you know, the American <laughs> version. Uh, but we tend to be in, in our SI unit. So just to kind of break that down, we can look at, uh, You know, we can look at SI units, we can compare that to American type style units. Um, but, but keep in mind that what we're really interested in and going forward is the understanding of, of SI units. But since there are two conventions, we need to be able to, you know, kind of go between, uh, both of them. So mass would be a great way to quantify a uh, style of matter, right? Basically how much it weighs um, in terms of SI units. We look to the gram or grams in terms of American, we tend to use uh, pounds or L LBS. So it's kind of a distinction between the two. You know, there are 454.5 grams within a pound, so there's a way to go between those two different units. Um, but as scientists, we go with the SI. Another mode of measurement could be length. And so the meter is um, the SI unit or little m, and then we could use um, maybe inches or even feet as our as our American version of, of that that meter. We also have volume. And for volume, the actual uh, SI unit is a decimeter cubed. Um, which is equal to, we're not, we're not there yet in terms of, of this lecture, but, but that's technically what the uh, SI unit for volume is. Um, technically. But we don't tend to use uh, the, the decimeter cubed um, idea um, with a lot of the, the chemistry that we look at. We tend to look at um, the leader or, or capital L 
and you can compare that maybe to the gallon in terms of, of the American version. Um, we can also describe matter in terms of temperature. And with temperature, we actually have two um, in terms of SI. We have degrees Celsius. And we have Kelvin. And in terms of the American, that's related to then the notion of degrees Fahrenheit. So there's our temperature. Um, we find with the SI units, uh, sometimes we look at degrees Celsius in terms of, a lot of times with like boiling point and melting point type ideas. Um, when we get into thermodynamics and looking at, you know, heats of energy and spontaneity of, 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 of reactions, we'll be getting into Kelvin as the unit. One thing we can at least both agree upon is time. Um, in terms of both, we're in terms of seconds um, as far as that goes. And to be honest, time just does vary as far as hours and minutes, but at least we're all on the same page as far uh, as that goes. We have some, some other notions, such as pressure. Again, this is one where uh, a unit that we don't tend to use a lot within chemistry is a Pascal. Uh, which is basically equal to um, a newton per meter cubed. I'm sorry, I said cubed meter squared. Which is a force over... An area, and so that's really our, our kind of definition of pressure. In terms of what we tend to use, we tend to use atmospheres. Um, in terms of pressure, and we also tend to use um, millimeters of mercury. So we tend to, to tend to use that uh, for our SI. In terms of pressure in, in English or, well, American, it, it can be all over the place, but um, one is uh, pounds per square inch. So there's pressure. Um, last one that we might have is this idea of, of energy. And, and for our, our energy idea, um, we're really looking at the notion of joules. terms of, of that idea of joule or energy 
right, is equal to force times distance. And the units that we have for our joule is, um, well, first off, we have the, the letter J, capital J, to symbolize joules. And these are actually in terms of kilogram meter squared per second squared, as far as the unit is concerned. There is no real English, or I'm sorry, American version of, of that idea of, of energy. And the last bit would be, you know, looking at maybe force. And with force, you're basically looking at the idea of a Newton or capital N. Newton is in terms of kilogram meters per second squared. Again, there is no uh, American version of that. Um, and so the idea of this idea of a Newton or this idea of force um, is, is equal to, you know, mass times acceleration. So those are just some of the units that we will be getting into. We won't necessarily be getting into all of them with the same velocity, but um, those are uh, some of the different units that we'll be getting into as far as, you know, SI units. And then also um, the, you know, American version, I guess you could say. Um, but really, at this point, just trying to, to go between different styles of units um, is, is, is going to be the important um piece to, to this particular section. Now, when we get into describing measurements, we find that often, you know, the measurement is very large or very small. So we use Greek prefixes to help in the description of a, of a number. So if we look at maybe a table here, we could have, you know, the number of units. We could then have the Greek prefix. And then we could have in the far right um, the Greek prefix uh, shorthand. So if we start at the very top, um, I tend to go up to up to um, the very large uh, to begin. So if we start with 1.0 times 10 to the 18th units or things, The Greek prefix for this is exa. 
which equals capital E. So this would be equal to 1.0 exa units depending on what the unit we had in the beginning. So that's how we can go through these different Greek prefixes is really just looking at how large of a number we're trying to describe. So if we go down by a power of three, we end up with peta or a capital P. And so that would be one peta unit. We tend to see this going down by powers of three, so that's what we see for the next. We go down to one times 10 to the 12th units, so looking at still very big numbers. This would be Terra, or capital T, and so this would be 1.0 Terra units. You might be familiar with um, computer drives and things of that nature. We have now drives that are in the terabyte region, right? And that's what that tera is standing for. It's standing for the number of units. In this case, the unit is a byte uh, in terms of how much information that particular hard drive can, can store. If we go down to 1 times 10 to the ninth, that's where we now have giga. Or if we're talking about bytes like we were with the terabyte, now this would be gigabytes. So if I have a thousand gigabytes, I have one terabyte. All right, we can go up from there and value. We are talking about one times 10 to the neg, I'm sorry, one times 10 to the positive six units. Now we're looking at mega. or a mega unit, or megabyte. And then we get to 1.0 times 10 to the third units, right, roughly looking at, you know, here, a thousand units. That's when we have our kilo. Notice that this is our first lower case symbol. So if you have a kilo of cocaine, well, you have 1,000 grams of cocaine and you are probably in for a lot of trouble. Um, so that's the top end. These are really kind of the, the, the large numbers. Here is where we have, you know, our base unit without any type of, of Greek prefix. And so now we're going on to the smaller side of, of units. So if I have 0 0.1 units, well then that is a deci or smaller d or a deci unit, decimeter, decigram, what have you. If we go to the next level, we end up with centi. Such as centimeter. And then if we go one step further, 
Now we're talking about, you know, 1.0 times 10 to the negative third units. That is a milli. Or a milli unit, like millimeter. And now we start to go down in thirds or powers of three, just like we were going uh, earlier in terms of, of above the base unit. So we have this notion of now 1.0 times 10 to the negative six. This is micro. Micro kind of has this funky U looking thing. A mu That's what it's called. So that's micro. We then go a little bit smaller. 1 times 10 to the negative ninth. Now we're talking about nano. You might have heard of nanobots or nanotechnology, um, nanowires, nanobreweries. <laughs> um, that's all just talking about how small of a value they are. Um, and then we can keep going smaller to uh, pico. And then to 10 to the negative 15th, which is femto. A lot of observation laser techniques are getting into femtoseconds, looking at describing reactions in very small time intervals. And now on the opposite end of the spectrum of 10 to the negative 18th, we have Atto. And so that would be an Atto unit. So that is the list of basic Greek prefixes that helps us to describe um, measurements that we will be taking um, of matter. Um, also, this table is a way to convert between one type of Greek uh, unit and another type of Greek unit, and we'll be looking at practicing that uh, quite shortly. So now that we got uh, a little bit of understanding of the measurements and, and different types of Greek prefixes representing uh, you know, numbers, now let's get into the idea of accuracy, precision, and significant figures. So we basically have three terms here that we kind of have to, to kind of walk through. Let's start with accuracy. And accuracy is basically um, is how, you know, exact one can measure a specific quantity. Accuracy is really dependent on the instrument that is being used to measure. the quantity. So I could have, you know, basically two scales. Scale one and scale two. 
And if I weigh, you know, the same solid object on one scale, I get a value of 10.34 grams. And then the other scale, I get 10.33 eight, seven grams. Here we see a different in accuracy. Scale on the left is less accurate. It can basically measure to the, you know, one hundredth place. Well, on the right, on scale two, um, we have something now that is more accurate since it can measure to the ten thousandths place. So here we have two measurements, you know, just one scale is more accurate than another because of its ability to go into, you know, basically more digits, essentially. So if we look at those two measurements, There are what I like to call known values and an approximation. If we go back to our examples of scale one and scale two, Scale one had the 10.34 grams, while scale two had the 10.3387 grams. So when we look at these digits, the first three of scale one are known, um, that we actually know that it's 10.3 grams. And even if this is a digital scale, that last digit that we have here is really an approximation. Same thing with the other scale, but notice that there's a lot more digits that are known. We can go all the way over to the thousands place, and then we finally get to the last digit, which is the approximation. So we could say that scale two is more accurate since there is a greater Um, detail in the known digits. Another example that might make this uh, more clear would be to look at maybe two rulers. We have ruler one and ruler two and we're trying to make a specific measurement. So here's our ruler one. Let's say this is in inches. Right, we would have zero on the far left. We would have 1.0 on the far right. 
And so we're using the same, you know, style of ruler for each one, one and two, but ruler two has more hash marks or, you know, more ways to define measurement. So maybe something that looks like that. And then something that looks like that. So just have basically a rough measurement with our ruler. And we're going to measure the same exact distance. So here is our distance. We're going to measure the same distance for each ruler. And if we go to ruler one, we could say for certain I have 0 0.5 inches. And we also know that it's less for each one, one and two, but ruler two has more hash marks or, you know, more ways to define measurement. So maybe something that looks like that. And then something that looks like that. So just have basically a rough measurement with our ruler. And we're going to measure the same exact distance. So here is our distance. We're going to measure the same distance for each ruler. And if we go to ruler one, we could say for certain I have 0 0.5 inches. And we also know that it's less than 1.0 inches. So that's the idea of, you know, kind of the known value. And now we go to an approximation. Meaning that, well, I know it's greater than 0 0.5, it's, you know, at least zero point five inches, but it's a little bit more than that. And then I could approximate and say, well, I think it's a zero point five one inches. Where here is my known digit or value and then we also then have the approximation so that's about as far as I can go with using that specific ruler with the ruler 2 I also know it's 0 0.5 inches. I know it's past that, but I know it's less than 0 0.6 inches. And that's just because there's a greater level of accuracy within this ruler. I can measure quantities much more uh, specifically. So if I come down, I could say, well, I know that it's zero point five, but 
looks to me like it's more than 0 0.55. And so now I can go to a, another level of accuracy where I know these two values and now I'm approximating the third saying that, oh, I know it's really close to 0.56 so I know that I'm past 0 0.55 and now my 8 is the approximation. So that's the idea of, of accuracy, is that accuracy is very dependent on the tool that's actually used in the measurement. Um, the greater level of ability in terms of measuring, um, you know, the greater level of accuracy that's actually there. And that's what significant figures is really describing. Significant figures basically indicate how accurate the measurement is. the greater number of significant figures the greater the accuracy So when we always look at a, a, a value, let's say, of a measurement, there's always going to be what we were just talking about. There's always going to be digits that are known or defined. And then that last one on the end is always an approximation. Even if you're doing this digitally. So that's the idea of significant figures and then the relationship to accuracy. Precision is basically how reproducible are the measurements by the instrument. So we can go back to kind of a, a scale example representing scale one and scale two. And we take three different measurements of, of a piece of material. First scale, we get 10.01, 10.00, and 10.01 grams for those three distinct measurements of the same material. 
And for the second scale, we get 10.05 grams, 10.10 10 .10 grams, and 10.00 grams. There's not much difference here. This scale is more precise, reproducible in terms of these results that we're having. Well, on the right side, right, this scale is less precise, not reproducible. results. And one thing to note is that both scales have the same accuracy. Since they measure to the same number of significant figures.